13 says a 50 kilogram child stands at the rim of a merry-go-round of radius 2.1 meters, rotating with an angular speed of 2.6 radians per second. A. What is the child's centripetal acceleration? B. What is the minimum force between her feet and the floor of the carousel that is required to keep her in the circular path? And C. What is what, what minimum coefficient of static friction is required? And lastly, is the answer you found reasonable? In other words, is she likely to stay on the merry-go-round? Yes or no? So it wants the, the centripetal acceleration. It's, we've, we've seen that the centripetal acceleration is the velocity squared over the radius. Well, in this case, the velocity, velocity equals the radius times the angular speed. And so what we have is, is acceleration equals v times v, so that's v squared over r. And so we can replace each one of these v's with r times r times uh, radius times angular speed. So radius times angular speed. And so what we get is the angular so the centripetal acceleration equals r times r times w or it's omega times omega times omega over r and so one of the r's is going to cancel out uh, so what we're, what we're our final equation for acceleration is a, a centripetal acceleration equals equals the radius times the angular speed squared the radius is is 2.1 the the angular speed is 2.6 and we square that so 2.1 times 2.6 squared this equals 14.196 meters per second squared. That's part A. That's part A. And then in, in part B, it says what minimum force between her feet and the floor of the carousel is required to keep her in uh, on the circular path. And so the, the force equals mass times acceleration. Her mass is 50 kilograms. Her acceleration, 14.196. And so she exerts. She, 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 there's a force being exerted of 709.8 newtons. And it says, what is the minimum coefficient of static friction is uh, is required? So the force from from friction, we're going to call it force of static friction, is the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. So the normal force is actually the negative of of mass times gravity. Uh, so the negative 9.8 becomes a positive 9.8, and so we can we can say that the normal force um, is 9.8 times her 50 kilograms. So and then the 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 static friction has to be at least the force that is being pulled on her has to be at least 709.8 newtons. So we decided that's the force being pulled on her in part B. And so we can set that up and, and say that the coefficient of static friction equals equals the force, which is 709.8 divided by the normal force, which we said is is 9.8 uh, meters per second squared times uh, uh, times her mass, which is 50 kilograms. And so 50 times 9.8 equals 490. And so we just plug 709.8 over 490, and the answer is the answer is one that the coefficient of static friction equals 1.44857. And so the question, the last part of that is, is the answer you found reasonable? Is in other words, is she likely to stay on the merry-go-round? And the answer is a big fat no. She's not likely, and the reason because the the coefficient of static friction is is rather high. Um, you typically don't see it past uh, 0.5 or 0.6, and this one's double. You know, point. This is this is uh, half of this would be 0.7. So this is more than double what either of the numbers I just gave you.